Well, this is our last week of content and critical reading, critical thinking before we go into essay one, which will be not only the main skill of this class in writing, writing good essays, but also 30% of your grade. So um, you probably know this by now, but I know when I was younger, the one thing I learned that helped me much was that most of my work for an essay was done reading and rereading, getting my ideas together, getting my support. And writing was actually almost like an afterthought because I knew exactly where I was going. I had all of my material, all of my topic sentences, all of my supporting quotes. I had a map of the essay in my mind. Um, outlines never worked for me, but laying it out on the table, getting the cue cards in sequence with the quotes, and knowing those ideas before I wrote a word and having all of the information in front of me that I was going to use made writing an essay really the easiest part, like the last 20%. So just kind of reminding you that it's all sort of front loaded. Now we're going back to the, the good old chart again. And finally, with chapter six, we're focusing a lot on the petroleum industry. You mostly start off um, in the 1960s with a review of the background of the fossil fuel industry. And then we get into the nitty gritty of their, what we call a misinformation campaign. That really goes into overdrive when we get into the late 1980s and early 1990s. And a lot of these uh, deceptions are funded by ExxonMobil, the American Petroleum Institute, and various wealthy industrialist families. Um, we see some of the heartland. We'll look more at the heritage in the next essay. You're also going to see uh, the George Marshall Institute. That's where Seitz and Singer worked for. And a lot of these uh, research institutes become kind of amplification systems for climate denial. And then it also finds its way not only into what politicians say, but it also, their message finds its way into lots of newspaper opinion pieces and certainly floods the airwaves with conservative talk show host, Fox News, other groups that have taken the uh, climate denialist position and tried to minimize the science of uh, climate change. So we're going to be right about midstream and sort of the background. And keep in mind your essay one, which will follow week three, will compare the tobacco industry and the fossil fuel industry um, that is, compare the strategies they use. And so I'm going to, it's a critical reading um, essay where you can articulate how the tobacco and fossil fuel industries use the same strategies. So you really have to understand those strategies, whether they're the uh, tobacco strategies or some of the logical fallacies we're looking at, whatever they are, you're going to want to shape your paper around shared strategies. So do your critical reading and think of how they use these strategies. And let me go into the work week for this week. We've got, as usual, a self-assessment just to give you an idea of what you're doing. Following that, um, an overview, and I will put this short uh, YouTube video right before the short list as ever so you can get a good idea. I'll try to make it brief. I'll get moving here. Some things are going to be pretty easy, a short quiz based on pages one and two. I just want to give you a good concept that's essential. And then also uh, kind of remind you of, uh, of how the uh, even somebody as intelligent as former Supreme Court Justice Antonio Scalia um, was just an idiot when it came to climate change. It is off the radar for conservatives. All right. So then we move into um, something I'm going to develop. This will be a review of some of your paragraphing, or I should say your ice packaging of quotes from last week. And I'll ask you to revise and I'll show you before and after and ask you to comment on the revisions and uh, which components of the quote integration 
were changed and made a difference. So that's going to be kind of a review of my editing of some of your work. And then as we move into the book, this part's pretty straightforward. I like it. It's the first four pages. And basically, I'm asking you for uh, your own take on what you think is a really interesting fact about um, just how deep the history of uh, global warming is. And then, of course, comment on your uh, classmates' responses as well. So this is just grounding us in the... Uh, the sort of historic context of climate change, and also giving you the background to, to understand that uh, when the denialists say we don't know, the science is new, well, this will remind you the science is hardly new. And actually, if you go back into our um, kind of uh, flow chart, if you will, you'll find that the fossil fuel industry first knew very well what was going on, and then because it would affect their bottom line, they soon started lying about it. So they've known as well for decades, going back into the 70s, that their product was going to heat up the atmosphere. They just, instead of being honest about it, they decided to start lying about it, make more money that way. A brief statement about quotes, how essential they are for academic writing, and how I require them in part because I can help you do a really good job with them. and It's just something you're going to want to get down. Many of you have it by now, but some of you might need a little bit of help, and it's a very critical academic skill. If you don't know how to integrate quotes, it just it probably knocks your essays down by a grade sometimes, and it just doesn't look so good. So um, now we're getting into a little bit more critical thinking. Um, document analysis, I've got a New York Times article reviewing what is a very seminal government report that Oreskes goes into great detail about, and some good explanations of uh, how to look at that report, and maybe also how not to make the mistake that most people make with that report. Anyway, pardon me, I'm kind of scrolling around here, and I want you to be careful in reading that. And then when we move into, this is the one, the Nuremberg Report, I, I want you, the New York Times article is based on it, but be careful about this. Read my warnings. Most people miss critical things about this report. And, uh, and it's actually more of a creative writing response here. I want you to imagine you're working in Reagan's White House and you're using one of these quotes, any one of them, as a basis of convincing Reagan's White House said there's really no reason to act. In other words, that CO2-induced climate change is no threat, and America could continue business as usual. Drill, baby, drill. More and more oil. So I want you to use the quote and create a script that you would give at a, let's say, White House cabinet meeting, explaining how um, this quote is a good reason not to do anything about climate change or the threat of it. And the usual stuff where the first three discussions are done. Hansen's graph, very difficult. I recommend you listen to my voice thread. Most people will get this wrong um, in part because the book in these pages, 185 to 189, mixes so much information that it's difficult to tease the strategy out. It's kind of um, spread over four or five pages and buried in a lot of um, historical context, biographical information. So you really have to get your critical thinking cap and maybe read that two or three times before you can understand how cherry picking of Hansen's graph was used to distort his findings. And again, I'd recommend listening to the, uh, um, pardon me, the uh, voice thread there as well. This is a very tricky part. Um, most people don't do it very well with it, but I think it's a worthwhile challenge. We get to uh, uh, the character assassination ad hominem of Al Gore, 189 to 197. It's kind of a long story. It's going to take you a little bit of time and maybe a couple of readings to really tease out how this works, how they ended up uh, using 
putting words into Roger Revelle's mouth to undermine vice presidential candidate Al Gore's credibility. And you got to keep in mind, he was extremely uh, um, popular in 1992. He just published Earth in the Balance. He was on what would be a winning presidential ticket with President Bill Clinton. And uh, the uh, industry folks didn't want it because they knew they had a strong environmental bent. So they went out of their way to attack Al Gore. It's a really fascinating thing. I hope you can get that. It take, might take a couple of readings. And then we also have um, the attack in practice because here's a, an attack piece by George Will, one of my all-time favorite conservative columnists. I don't always agree with him, but I, you know, hats off. He's a brilliant man, though, of course, he's being an idiot here. And it's uh, really fascinating to see how the attack of Al Gore turns... Uh, bore fruit with editorials such as George Will's and uh, people attacking him right and left. So it was a really ingenious uh, way of undermining Vice President Al Gore's credibility, and it worked. And George Will's attack piece is evidence of that. You can follow up this a little bit more, too, um, as you get into uh, a couple, about 20 minutes of extra reading. Anyway, real interesting thing, and again, I try to use uh, original documents from time to time to give you an idea that this stuff isn't just happening in an academic textbook. It's finding its way into the culture through um, opinion pieces, television, commentary, etc. So, you're done with week three. You've got all your content done for essay one, and week four, we're going to put it together. And it's going to be a, a, a draft of essay, um, one due on Tuesday, week four. I'll provide short feedback by Thursday, and your final draft will be due on Sunday. So all of week four is about getting that essay down. And I will provide ample information, I hope it's ample, to help you achieve an excellent essay when we move into week four. So that's it for week three, all right?